Greetings again, friends. Well, I have some exciting things to talk about, something that the Bible refers to in over two chapters. In the book of Revelation, in chapter 17, 18, and into 19, there is a discussion of Babylon. Now, there is way too much information that I have to share about Babylon because it goes way back into the Old Testament, way back even into the book of Genesis, if we really get into the beginnings of it. And there is much to talk about in reference to what it is. Now, I have, I'm trying to wrap my head around how I can best communicate this to you as we study God's Word and get into what the Bible says. There's lots written about this. There is a book that's been around for years and years that's a really thick book uh, by Alexander Hislop called The Two Babylons. I have that. Uh, it deals with Babylon through history. I've got lots of discussion in different books that I have that deal with Babylon, what it is. There's lots of opinions about Babylon, uh, whether it's a figurative city, a literal city, uh, the mystery Babylon as it comes into. So I'm going to get into all of that. But Today, I want to get into one particular area and even give you some information related to that area. Now, there's much that I can say, and I hope you're paying attention to the videos I'm doing. I took a little bit of a break last time to share with you what I did in giving an expository sermon in reference to leadership that could help people who are pastors or leaders, and as I taught that to a group in Pakistan, and uh, as, as I'm teaching in other areas, and so you might want to look at that to benefit from that uh, material that I used if you watched that video that I just did. But in this video, I'm digging back into that prophetic series that I want to bring to you, and I've kind of, I'm kind of settling on three videos from this, possibly more, but we'll see how it goes. I'm going to try to get it to three and focusing on something that I actually uh, addressed a little in the last video when I was teaching. Now, in talking about letter grades and in and this Lessons to Learn ministry that I have, you think about the letter grades A, B, C, D, E, and F. Well, as I mentioned in that message, you don't want an F. Now, in reference to that, I was speaking of what First Timothy talked about in not following fables and false teaching. Well, friend, there is a lot of false teaching in reference to this city of Babylon. And so that's part of what I want to get into today and maybe address a little going forward. But there's three particular things that I want to talk about where you, you don't want to deal with Babylon. Now, let me say this first again before I get into it. You basically have two cities in the Bible that are focused on more than other cities, two main cities. And it's not New York and, and cities in America or cities in other countries. You know, we're not talking about Paris or the famous cities in different countries. No, we're, we're, we're talking about two biblical cities that are used all through Scripture and more than other cities and even today in, in many respects. And the two cities that are mentioned in Scripture are basically a good city and a bad city. And you have uh, Jerusalem being mentioned as the good city and many good things coming from Jerusalem. And you have Babylon being mentioned as the bad city and many bad things coming from Babylon. Well, in reference to Babylon, I want to discuss again, as I said, at least three videos dealing with this. And the first today will deal with Babylon's fornication. The fornication of Babylon is the first. Now, the second is going to deal with the fortitude of Babylon, and that is more in reference to the city of Babylon, what it is, figurative, literal, uh, and get into that or both or whatever. And then the third video 
if I don't do more, will be dealing with the fall of Babylon. So these are all things I want to address, and you can ask questions or give me feedback if you want me to specifically focus on one of these things more so, or try to answer questions. I'll be happy to get into that or address it in a future video. So what I'm doing today is going to talk about the fornication of Babylon. Now, going back to our understanding in the book of Revelation, uh, understand that fornication is a word that's used in Revelation a lot in reference to Babylon. In fact, there's like eight times it's used uh, in, in the different places here in, uh, in Revelation. And so in, in particular, chapter 17, 18, and 19, uh, <clears throat> but we go back to where this was introduced in Revelation 14. Now in Revelation 14, you come to verse 8, and this was one of those three angels that was mentioned, um, the proclamation of three angels that's mentioned as you go uh, into what is going to happen with getting into the bowl judgments. So that is like this in this interlude time. So one of these special angels is one that is dealing with the judgment on Babylon and the announcement is made in Revelation 14 verse 8 where it says, again, this is right after that interlude dealing with the 144,000. Go back and look at that video that I just recently did too to learn about that distinct group. But you can see here in Revelation 14 8 it's saying, and another angel followed saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she has made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. All right, now that is looking ahead at what's going to happen. And we'll deal with that in a couple more videos in more detail. But I want again to talk about the fornication of Babylon and then a particular application from that that I want to get into related to that. So the fornication you see of Babylon is introduced as we get into the detail in chapter 17 of Revelation. And let's just go ahead and introduce this, which we'll get into more later. But verse 1 of 17 says, Then one of the seven angels <clears throat> who had the seven bowls. Now again, there were different angels that are involved in the different judgments of God as those judgments began to be announced with the trumpet judgments and the bold judgments. So a lot of angelic activity going on with what God is doing from the heavenly realm. You see that. So you see one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and talked with me, saying to me, come, I will show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters. Now, we actually have a pretty neat thing in this particular chapter because not only is the angel telling John uh, what is going to happen with Babylon, there's actually the meaning or interpretation of it given to us. So there is symbols here. But we don't have to wonder what the symbols may mean. Now, there's aspects we may wonder about, and there's commentators that differ. But, but the meaning is given to us of these things, or is given to John, and so we have that as we get later on. But again, my focus here is on the fornication of Babylon. So look at Revelation 17, 2, and twice here it talks about that. It says, "...with whom the kings of the earth committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication." All right, that's chapter 17. Now, you go and you flip over to the next chapter in chapter 18, and you get down to verse 3 and 18 toward the beginning again. It says, For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath 
of her fornication, the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth have become rich through the abundance of her luxury. So again, much more can be discussed about that. So you have this word fornication talked about. Again, in verse 9 there, it's mentioned the kings of the earth who committed fornication and lived luxuriously with her will weep and lament for her when they see the smoke of her burning. So again, the judgment on Babylon is coming, and we again get to that in the future. But even as you get to verse 19, and that judgment is, is pronounced and, and talked about, uh, and even rejoiced over finally being uh, totally destroyed, you have it discussing again in chapter 19, uh, saying here again in verse 2 of chapter 19, For true and righteous are his judgments, because he has judged the great harlot who corrupted the earth with her fornication. And he has avenged on her the blood of his servants shed by her. Okay. So you have all these different places, again, where the word fornication is used. So let's just talk about that a little bit more in relation to Babylon. Now, let me just say this as sort of introductory with Babylon. Babylon sort of represents all of that false religion that goes all the way back to Nimrod. And we can look in Genesis 10 and see that, and we'll probably look more at that next time. But it goes way back and deals with false teaching. Now, one of the things that I've addressed a couple different ways in times, at least, is the false teaching related to sexuality. It's interesting that this word fornication is a word primarily dealing with a literal aspect of all types of forms of sexual uh, perversion. Any type of sexual sin is wrapped up in this word. And guess what the word is? Pornea. All right. That is the word. And it's where we get our English word porn, pornography. All right. So that's one of the things I want to address. Now, part of false religion has always been to falsely represent sexuality. It is, it is sad to look at history and see how this was done. Uh, and I may even discuss this in reference to something Paul told a church that had problems in this area too. So this false teaching and worship was often done celebrating the human body, but doing so with the sexuality of human beings in a perverted way as the devil wants to exploit that. Now, you can go back and look at what I've talked about in reference to some examples of this that you have seen and may not even think so badly about, but you should, when I talked about cuties and the Super Bowl seduction, cuties, that Netflix program and the Super Bowl seduction where the, where the erotic dancing was done, okay, and got millions of views. You can go back and look at that. You can go back and look at what I talked about, the problem that I see in the blog I had written years ago in reference to what our society is doing and that it is publicizing the wrong thing. It is publicizing sexuality and privatizing God, trying to say you shouldn't talk about God in public. It's a private thing, but you can talk about sexuality in public and in anything you talk about and sell and joke about or whatever. And all you got to do is look at what comedy or so-called comedy is about, and it's 90% sexual. And look at what's going on in reference to uh, uh, what is, is 
used to sell things because the sexual drive is part of what everybody has. But listen, because people have been duped by the devil and are flunking often in their life and being caught up in all kinds of sexual sin, fornication or porn or pornography, I thought it would be quite interesting to share some statistics related to this. Now, you can find statistics on there and I wouldn't recommend like searching for this a whole lot because a lot of junk can come up and and corrupt your mind. But there are organizations that have given us some things about this. There is one that seeks to try to end a lot of this addiction and problem out there. And there's a website called Enough is Enough. And you could go to that to get some of these statistics, which I'll try to give you in the in the description bar as well. But I just want to share some of these statistics with you to give you an idea. Now, remember, Babylon is known for its fornication and that is porn or pornea and all the things related to that. So it's going to involve this. That's why I want to segue into this, these statistics related to that and the problem we have. Now, what you see as the archives of the porn industry say, and Enough is Enough talks about this, that they market it in many ways. Now, they market it often through children's characters to try to get people hooked on this at younger and younger ages. And uh, it says here that characters such as Pokemon, My Little Pony, and Action Man revealed thousands of links to porn sites, and 30% of those were hardcore. And that was from a 2000 uh, study on that. Um, and another study around this time said nearly 74% of pornography websites surveyed display adult conduct, content on their homepage, which is accessible to anyone, before even asking if viewers are of legal age. So they're putting this stuff out there before they even ask that question they're supposed to ask. And there are there are government things that in the in the U.S. that have tried to put uh, reins on this stuff going on. But this is a huge industry. I mean, what goes on with porn in the U.S. and around the world is huge business and people fight for the money related to this and all that comes with it. So uh, it's promoted by Hollywood often in different ways, in ways that they at least push it to people, and it's promoted in in so many ways, and, and anything on the internet, there's so many tags and things that you could get caught up in if you're not careful. Uh, they, they say here on this website that <clears throat> American children began consuming hardcore pornography at an average age, this is an average age, okay? Hardcore pornography at 11. What are we allowing our children to see? Friend, if you have children or you know of children, help protect them from this garbage. Help protect them from this fornication that is tied to false worship of God and an understanding of who we are and sexuality. Help them understand that because our children are getting impacted by this. And with all the craziness like at the U.S. border where there, where there are sex traffickers and and these drug cartels that are trafficking children in and getting involved in all of that and pedophilia and everything. I'm telling you, this is out there everywhere. And so you need to help stand against it and fight against it. But the average age of 11 in the U.S. And it says um, uh, in this statistic, four out of five, four out of five 16-year-olds regularly access pornography online. That's only one out of five that don't, okay, regularly. <laughs> All right, so uh, they note here too that the pornographic industry, the pornography industry is at least a $97 billion industry. 
All right, 97 billion, and that's worldwide. So this is being promoted everywhere in every country, and the U.S. is involved in this as well. In fact, uh, one statistic here uh, I'll read in a minute deals with that a little bit more. So in, in the U.S., uh, the pornography industry is said to be around a $13 billion industry, and about $3 billion uh, of that is tied to Internet pornography. So a lot of stuff is in, in the statistics here, and just listen to this to try to understand this and grasp this a little bit more. Uh, so putting some further numbers on this and this was this was way back from a 2006 study um, every second three thousand seventy five and six seventy five dollars and sixty four cent is being spent on pornography twenty eight thousand two hundred and fifty eight internet viewers are viewing pornography 372 internet users are typing adult search terms into search engines and every 39 minutes a new pornographic video is made in the United States. And that was from 2006. It may be more now. Um, 79% of youth unwanted exposure to, to, to pornography occurs in the home. Parents, what are you letting your children get into? Please guard what they get into. Help them not get in and addicted to this trash. All right. This this perversion of what God created to be beautiful and 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 man has corrupted with all its false teaching and religion and gets into this false idea and and what we see statistically going on here. I find this horrific that and being one who worked I find this true, but horrific being one who worked on a campus, that it, it is just pervasive as it is perverse. It's all over the campuses. This statistic here says 87% of university students polled. They polled students uh, and 87% from this particular CampusKiss.com study said that they have virtual sex mainly using instant messenger, webcam, and telephone. Now, <clears throat> there's a lot of that garbage going on and it's impacting a lot of kids on the campuses. So keep in touch with your kids as they go off to school if they do that too, and, and uh, they need to have accountability, and we need to help them and protect them from getting involved in this. So there's, there's lots more I could get into there. Uh, but again, just to kind of understand this a little bit better, I, I want to give you some statistics here, as it says, just to help you see what what this is really doing. Now, as I mentioned, uh, this is according to cybersecurity experts like Re Webroot. In the U.S. alone, more than 68 million searches are submitted every day for porn-related queries. That's 25% of all daily search traffic. Do you understand that? That means one quarter of the time people are online, there is a search for something pornographic, according to the web people that keep these statistics. If you don't think it's out there, then you have your head in the sand. Or you don't think it's a problem, then you need to pay attention to yourself and to your children and what they see. So listen to this in, in tying those statistics down more. To help you get your head around this, it says, here are some more statistics. 28,258 people are watching porn every second. Five billion emails are sent daily that contain pornographic content. Just fishing out there, trying to push it out on people. You might have one in your inbox uh, as they do that to just get it out there first and then hook people on it. All right. Forty million Americans regularly access Internet pornography. 
40 million regularly. 37, listen to this, 37 studio porn movies. They were probably doing this during COVID too. 37 studio porn movies are created every day. 37 every day. All right. $3,075 is spent accessing online porn every second. $3,075 a second when you when you take it down to the second, that's how much is spent on this. So there's lots more that could be talked about in relation to this. But friend, are you burdened by this? Do, do you care about this? You should. This is part of what God is going to destroy his wrath is against that. When, when you commit sin, he says that it's a sin against your own body when you commit a sexual sin. And there's science that could be brought into that to explain that. So this is a problem. And it was a problem in the Corinthian church. I mean, the Corinthian church, they, they had lots of problems and thus have lots of uh, apostolic addressing uh, to help us to learn from what Paul addressed to that church. But in, in the church address that he gave in chapter 6 of 1 Corinthians, you have a discussion here that I think is appropriate as I come to a conclusion here in this first video dealing with the fornication of Babylon. So I, I want to give you some kind of hope with all these horrific statistics. So listen to this first as it gets into this here in 1 Corinthians 6, 9. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetousness, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. Are you in one of those categories? Have you ever stolen anything? Are you a thief? If you steal something... You can be called a thief. Have you ever coveted? That's one of the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not covet. Have you ever wanted something someone else has? I mean, I, I'm. the Bible should convict you. You should realize you're lost. And you should realize your need to get freed from addictions that you may have. And you can be because there is hope for someone if they turn to God, the Creator, who created their body, who understands them, who wants to keep them from false religion and anything tied to Babylon in that sense. And he, he says here in verse 11, And such were some of you. But you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. There is hope for your addiction if you are addicted to pornography. And there is hope for us in what God will do to ultimately judge and judge this wicked city that all of this false worship 
and false teaching and fables and as it gets into all of the fornication, all that it has done and corrupted the whole world in will be judged ultimately and the saints will rejoice. So friend, I hope this introduction is important for you to dig into this study more about what this city is. We'll talk about the fortitude of Babylon. We'll talk about the fall of Babylon more. We may discuss another aspect of it, but I hope this aspect of discussing the fornication, the poor of Babylon will be something that will challenge you and help you to help other people. Like this video, share it with others, subscribe to my channel, and hit the notification bell to be ready when I post the next video here. Thank you for watching.